Okay, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on how to set up the MPD-218 to automate Geist controls when Geist is being ran as an instrument within uh, PreSonus Studio One 3. Um, I just got this unit and I've been trying to figure out how to set this up so the drum pads work with Geist in Studio One as well as being able to map some of these some of these controls to some uh, automation like, in, like changing volume or, or, or affecting the drums in some way while, while playing at the same time. Uh, I had a hard time figuring it out so I thought I'd create this video just to show you guys how to do it. Okay, so the first thing that we do of course is hook up the MPD-218 to your computer and it's just a matter of just plugging in the USB and it, it, it's just it's class compliant so but you don't need any driver installations or anything like that. So once you have it plugged in you open Studio One and the first thing you want to do is go into Studio One Preferences and we're going to set this up as an external device. So go to your external devices here in Preferences, click on Add and there's already an Akai MPD-18 in the system and that's fine, it's mapped, it's mapped correctly. Just make sure you choose to receive from your 218 port and I click all this stuff too. Click OK. So now we have the MPD 8 to 18, which is, ours is a 218, but we have it mapped here as an external device. Click OK, and we're going to go over here and we're going to grab Geist, drag it over, create a instrument track out of it. Oop, lost it somehow. Let's go ahead and grab it again. And go ahead and drag and drop. So now we have Geist. It's open over here, my other monitor. Click the inspector, go down where it says in. And right now it says new keyboard, we want, to, we want the input to be the MPD-18. So now we have this all set up to start using at least the drum pads. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, uh, just click a kit here and start playing. And you see that's working. So we've got the drum, the drum pads working. So now the next step is we want to get these knobs to work. So what we want to do is we'll go over here again. We'll close the inspector. What I want to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose. Well, before I do all that, I'm going to go into Studio One. I'm going to go to Preferences. And here's the tricky part. Here's the part that I couldn't figure out, but now I understand. We want to add the MPD-18 again, but we're going, to, we're going to add it as a control surface this time. So we're going to choose to add a new external device, and this time, just a new control surface. I'm going to call this the manufacturer's Akai, and I'm just going to call it the MPD control, control surface. And I'm going to receive from the 218. And at this point, I'm getting this message. The port is already in use. Connecting multiple devices to the same port may lead to copy transmission. I'm going to select OK. It doesn't seem to be a problem. So, um, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't tend to worry about that. Now I have the two devices set up. The first one, the MPD-18, is the drum pads. The second is the control surface. It's all the knobs. Select OK again. And this time I'm going to go to the. I'm going to go back to the channel here, and I'm going to choose Add Remove. And I'm going to add remove some, just some MIDI channels here. I'm going to do channel 20, 21, and 22. And when I double click them, it just adds them over here. Let me select. So that's. I'm going to select close here, and I'm going to go back up here. And I'm going to expand those out. Click on this little button. You see, I have Control 20, Control 21, and Control 22 for this particular example mapped out. I'm going to save the project. Just keyboard save. Now, this is where the the mapping kind of starts. I'm going to highlight one of these mini channels I just created. I apologize if that's not the right terminology. I'm still learning, but I'll call it mini channel for now. I'm going to click this drop down arrow, and I want to assign it to the control surface control surface needs to learn about itself. So it pops up a box saying, hey, I need, I need some you know, information to, before I can work. So what, how you're gonna do this is, you're gonna click the MIDI Learn button. When you click the MIDI Learn button, all you need to do at this point 
and start grabbing stuff and turning it and it will it will learn how to map it so you see here MIDI learn is connect is is clicked I'm gonna turn this first knob when I turn this first knob you'll see it show up here okay I'm gonna do the same for the second knob I'm gonna do the same for all six knobs in bank A so now I have all six knobs configured now I'm gonna click bank B and I'm gonna do the same thing. And you see right now it's control one through six. But when I can, when I, now that I'm on bank B, I'm gonna turn control one again. You'll see it will map it as control seven. And then eight for the second one. I'm gonna go to the third one, that'll be nine. And I'll just go ahead and finish mapping these for, for control bank B. And then if I wanna map C, the control bank C, I can go to C and just kinda of do the same thing again. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now, all banks of these knobs are mapped. So they're gonna be, they're ready to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Now, what I have is, I have this first MIDI channel again highlighted. And you see up at the top here, it says Control 18. What I wanna do is I wanna map Bank A's first knob to this, this MIDI channel. So I'm gonna select Bank A over here. And I'm just going to simply turn this first knob. Watch when I turn that first knob, what happens to control 18? It turns into control 1. So now I can say, I'm going to click this little arrow, I'm going to map control 1 to MIDI control 2, or 20, sorry. I click that, and I start, if I start moving control knob 1, oh, I didn't click it. Click this this blue arrow you can see that I'm, I'm automating that from the controller I'm gonna highlight this one and I'm gonna move the second controller second knob I should say and watch that turn into control 2 so now I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna map that and as I move this And for this last one, let's say I want to go to bank B. I want bank B's first knob to control this one. So I've selected bank B over here, and I'm going to just simply turn this knob. And watch what happens to control 2 there. It's going to turn into control 7, which is the first after the initial 6 from bank A, if that makes sense. I'm going to click the arrow to assign it to MIDI control 22, and turn the knob, and there we go. And save the project. Now, here's the tricky part. I'm going to go into Geist. Geist has a MIDI learn function. Where is it at? Geist has a MIDI learn function. And that tends to work in standalone mode, but inside Studio One it doesn't work. And in Studio One has a MIDI learn function as well, but that doesn't seem to work with Geist either. So, this is why we're doing all this setup. So, normally you would click MIDI learn. Turn some, turn some knobs, and Geist would be smart enough to kind of figure it out. Let me turn this light off for this monitor. But in this case, we have to map the MIDI ch channel. So I'm going to click MIDI Learn. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to the pad mixer, and I'm going to click MIDI Learn. And let's say I want to automate this with Bank B's first channel, or first, no first knob. If you recall, that was CC22. So now I have the volume for CC, CC22 configured right. So if I uncheck MIDI Learn, I'm gonna start, let me turn the slate back on. If I start rotating this knob, the second for bank B, you should see this. Where did I do? Oh, the, uh, bank, sorry, the first knob. I don't know why I was selecting the second. So now we're automating that volume. So if we have the kick going, I have to do this one-handed, so bear with me. You can hear it get louder and quieter. And that's That's pretty cool. Now one thing I notice is sometimes Geist will kind of crash when we do these assignments. So if it crashes, um, 
you know, bear with me, we'll get, we'll get it loaded back up here. So now I'm going to try to do some MIDI learn with like an effect here. So if I go to a distortion and I want to bind the MIDI, this is where sometimes it'll crash, but hopefully it doesn't. This time I want to bind it to channel 20. Oh, it crashed. Now, I don't know why it's doing that. And that's something I'm going to make a, probably send a report to Geist and pretty, pretty soon it's about to reopen it. Okay. So I'm back after that crash. Um, I had to kind of reset things up after the software crashed. I'm definitely going to be reaching out to F expansion and PreSonus to see why this might be crashing sometimes. But we're going to try this again. So we're going to try MIDI Learn. I'm going to turn that on over here. We can see that before the crash, we were able to map the volume control of this kick to uh, that first CC channel that, that that's actually on the, the B bank. Now we're gonna try to map the tone of the distortion to CC20. So now we have that mapped to CC20. And we're gonna do the same for the drive. Except for this time we're gonna do drive as CC21. Channel one though. Uh, this looks like it might be the wrong channel. Alright, so now we have this map to, oh, uh, where's it, where's it at? Uh, first channel, CC20, first channel, CC21, first channel, CC22, though you can't read the whole number. I'm going to go ahead and click MIDI Learn Off and save the project. And now what I should see is, I'm going to turn this lamp back on. <clears throat> Now I'm over here in the MPD 218. I'm on bank A. And if I start turning this first knob, we should see the tone start to move. Nice. So we got automation there. If I turn the second knob in bank A, we should see this drive move. And you can see the same thing occurring over here in this control 21, because this is that's all mapped to uh, guys to do these controls. Now if I switch to bank B and turn this first knob. You can see well, now I've got the controller, the volume going to that kick. So if I st if I play the kick, you can hear like, the volume changes on it. I have to do this one-handed, so bear with me. But you can see now if I select bank A, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play this kick and turn this first knob at the same time and you should see the tone. And then I'm going to do the same with the second knob here and you can see the drive. And that's it for automation. And again, you can see all that stuff happening, happening over here to, as well. So, that's how I kind of figure out how to set up automation with Geist and Studio One. Uh, like I said, it gets a little finicky because, uh, you know, it, it, it'll when you do this MIDI mapping in Geist in Studio One, it, it'll it crash a couple of times sometimes before you can get it all configured. Um, but you can do it, it's doable, and you can run that off in this really great device, this little MPD-218. Um, super happy with how all this is working out. Um, any questions, just, you know, leave them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching. Okay, there's actually one more thing I did want to talk about. Um, I we just really wanted to quickly touch on, now that we've set up the automation, uh, how we record that automation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record automating this drive change. And that's on Control 21 over here. So, and one thing I'm going to do is, if you don't have it open, is click on the edit button here, and that should brings up your piano roll, and you can see the, uh, you'll see the automation kind of happen in here after I record it. So, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to choose, right now it's to, set to read, I'm going to set, set to write. I am going to click the record button and start pounding on some. 
hopefully you can hear that distortion change. All right, so that's recorded. Now, down here you see Control 21 is showing up in this panel. If I select that and scroll, you can see the automation for that that was drawn in. And that's what was automating this drive here. So if I go back and press play, we should see that move. Actually, I messed up. First, we have to switch this to read. Now we go back, press play. Now we can see that changing. It's just following that automation right there. So that's how you record the automation. Of course, you can go in here and and edit it and change it by hand if you want. And we can see how that how that affects things. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, yep, that that's the end of the video. All right, thanks for watching.